second open forum. The reason why we have the, uh, the, the uh, curtains closed back there is to try to force everybody to sit in the front. You can see how that worked really well. You want us to sit in the front? No, you're good. You move to the back. Yeah, you're good. I know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go through uh, a presentation and try to share as much information as we know it at this point. I got to tell you, if you were here on Monday, there's going to be a few things that'll change because this is a fluid situation. And um, when I get to it in the presentation, I'll share with you that we had a question raised by uh, two of our board members um, from Marshall um, this afternoon. And um, we contacted our lawyers. We got two answers back that changed the scope of our timeline. That's just what happens. So let me start with annexation. We're going to talk about annexation, then we're going to talk about some other things that are going on associated with serving kids. Here's what, and this is real broad stroke, and it oversimplifies it because this, uh, the circumstances for Albion have been going on for quite some time. But let me, let me share a couple hi um, highlights here in this conversation. Now, in its fourth year of a deficit elimination plan, Yet every year they seem to be increasing their operational um, deficit annually. Many things outside of their control. They're actually operating within their budget that was proposed at the beginning of the year, but they're losing students. And when they lose students, they lose revenue. When they lose revenue, they're out of, out of kilter, out of balance. It actually happens with us, and I'll share with, with, with you in that, uh, about that in a second. They closed their high school in 2013, which was an incredibly gut-wrenching process. Entered into a cooperative agreement with Marshall Public Schools to provide a high school education. We had 158 high school age students that came across to Marshall Public Schools um, High School in one fell swoop between getting it together at the end of June, 1st of July, and having it happen successfully in September after Labor Day. Since July 1, 2013, Marshall Public Schools has served 526 students residing in Albion across all grade levels, equaling over $4 million in revenue generated during that same time uh, in the district um, for our purposes. And we pretty much spent most all of that if you look at our budget, we didn't add a lot into our fund balance. We basically had to spend those, those resources educating kids, which is what we do. We restructured, uh, or Albion restructured their district into a K-8 model. A really, it was wonderful, the K-8 model I looked at. It would have worked wonderfully, except you can't run a school when you lose kids time and time again. They continue to lose students by choice to surrounding districts, leaving today 457 students currently attending Albion schools this year. And that was at the beginning of the year. As we go through for next, uh, next semester, that's gonna have a lot of impact based on school of choice. Marshall Public Schools began the year with 55 less students than we budgeted. 55 less students than we budgeted. Creating a loss of an anticipated revenue in our budget that was approved in June of $400,000 approximately. We immediately went about making reductions and cuts. We're planning on some others coming up fairly soon. And one of the big controversial cuts was not hiring back our uh, general aides, general program aides, or LRE aides, to support all students in the general ed setting, especially students with IEPs or special ed. Imagine if we started cutting music and art and those types of things, which is what Albion had to do this year. They started out with music, art, STEM, or STEMA, for science, technology, engineering, math, and art. And they had to cut all of that out. They don't provide phys ed with a phys ed teacher for all of their students right now in their grade school. 
because they had to cut all that out. An independent Albion school district is no longer a viable option. That was stated at least twice up in Lansing. They need a partner to survive. To maintain the level of quality and quality of educational services in Marshall, we need to continue to increase student enrollment every year. We can't be stagnant because costs go up. So we have to continue to raise our population. You can tell out of the decisions we've made since 2009 with our expansion with the Michigan Youth Challenge Academy, with the work we've been doing with developing the first ever early college in Calhoun County, those things we do to try to build and attract more students coming into our district. The School of Choice window has opened for the second semester. We're starting to get applications in. And Albion has five neighboring districts currently driving buses into their community to take students out, into the heart of their community to take students out. No matter what action we take, we can expect Albion to have an impact on our enrollment in January. It's going to either be a positive impact or a negative one. We're not sure. We don't have a crystal ball. Albion requested on December 1 that Marshall Board and Marshall Public Schools consider annexing their district. Marshall Public Schools is currently investigating this possibility and we're meeting with our legal counsel and talking with them every week, many times a week. We're meeting with the Department of Treasury every week, many times a week. We're meeting with the Department of Education and we're also seeking input from both our internal and external stakeholders and I'm involved and my board's involved many times going to the Albion community and sitting in their board meetings and giving testimony and answering questions and listening to what the community has to say about all this. In the school code and throughout this process, as we talk about annexation, Albion is considered to be the district annexed and Marshall is considered the annexing district. So let me just school you a little bit. Steps towards annexation. The annexing district or Marshall Public Schools would need to pass a board resolution to annex another district, being Albion. If the resolution is passed by the majority of the Marshall Board, the resolution is submitted to the State Superintendent of Public Instruction for Michigan Department of Education approval. If, the approve, if, if it's approved by the state superintendent, Brian Whiston, MDE officially notifies both districts that that's been approved. The next step is that Albion, the Albion board, then calls the election for the voters in the existing Albion district to approve the annexation. In the ballot language, the date the annexation is to take effect is determined, and it goes in front of their voters at whichever election is determined to uh, to be the one that we're going to do. If the majority approval of voters in the election is verified and is positive on the date of annexation, all assets and liabilities are transferred to Marshall Public Schools and the Albion Board releases their authority. The school, Albion School is essentially then absorbed into the existing and expanded Marshall District. It's not a consolidated, consolidated district. It's not creating a brand new district out of the dissolution of two. It's maintaining the, the Marshall Public Schools, absorbing Albion into that, and going forward from there. Someone asked in the first presentation on Monday, how come the voters in Marshall don't get asked the question? Not our choice. School law, state law for an annexation. So let me talk about the annexation timeline. And this is really interesting because this changed since Monday. It actually changed three hours ago. My board doesn't even know it. Although I did send you this, this uh, presentation three hours ago if you checked your emails. Marshall Public Schools submits the 22G grant proposal. And you, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. On or before uh, December 22nd. 
2015. That's the deadline to submit this uh, competitive grant. Marshall Public Schools Board passes or addresses the resolution to annex Albion, and that has to occur in our board meeting in January, on January 11th. That's different than what I said on Monday. The Michigan Department of Education issues a decision after that gets passed, if it gets passed, and then Brian Whiston meets with MDE, talks with Treasury, they have a discussion with the governor, and they determine if we should go forward with annexation. We're hoping that we would get response back within a week, but basically we have another board meeting scheduled for January 25th, and we certainly expect that the state would give us an answer by then. MDE issues award decision on the 22G grant on or before um, February 5th of 2016. Now this is where the news came in. My board president and one of our board members, Vic Potter, came to me this afternoon and said, one of the questions people are asking is, once we pass a resolution, if we pass a resolution, when can we rescind it if we find new information financially in the records of, uh, that weren't discovered before, or if we find that we don't get the 22G awarded to us, if we don't get the grant? Well, law requires, they gave us two answers. One is, law requires that our board passes a resolution within 120 days of the, of the election in which the um, question is going to be called for Albion. And so they said, you can't pass that resolution on December 16th, which is what I said on Monday. They said, you have to pass that resolution uh, on, on or after January 11th of 2016. And then they said, and then I said, well, what about the rescension? I mean, can we rescind? And they said, yes, you legally have between the time you pass the resolution until and before the ballot language is presented to the county, which, has, which is required to be presented by February 9th in Calhoun County for the election to be called for the May election. So we basically have two weeks, maybe three weeks to finish our vetting of this information and make a decision. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to get to the point where Albion is calling the election and then we decide after that that we want to rescind. Because we don't want to embarrass our district and embarrass the Albion district in regards to that. And we should have all the information available for that decision. The Albion board then calls the election on or before February 8th. 2016 so that they can submit the ballot language to the county. May 2016 election then, this goes on the ballot for the Albion voters, and if approved by the Albion voters, then the annexation is in place and will be effective whatever date is placed in the, um, in the ballot language. The other thing I want to say about this resolution is and we've been saying this all along to our, our partners in Albion. As collaborators, we like working with Albion. We've been doing this since 2010. We've been trying to figure out how to bring bigger and better opportunities to our students regionally in this, this area for quality education. But they know, and we know, that ultimately this is a business. It's a business about educating kids, but it is financial. And so in our resolution, we can say that we want to pass a resolution to annex Albion in the contingency that we receive the 22G grant awarded to us that we've, we requested. And my board has already said in Marshall that we don't get that grant game over in regards to annexation. So you can see we're paying really close attention on the way this is going to sequence 
So we don't leave Albion in the lurch, and we certainly don't leave our district in the lurch. Financial implications and liabilities. Albion's current operational debt at the time of annexation becomes Marshall's responsibility. Albion's financial assets and their liabilities become Marshall's. They have four facilities, two of them are in operation, two of them are mothballed. Those become our responsibility. Property, equipment, technology, all of that becomes our responsibility and our ownership. Albion's sinking fund of four mills that they've generated terminates at the time of annexation. Marshall's sinking fund of one mill is then applied across all voters in the newly expanded Marshall Public Schools District. Kind of a win-win. Albion doesn't have to pay four mills, they only pay one mill, and Marshall gets more than one mill normally generated if we hadn't annexed the district. But any new sinking fund, any new building bonds or capital improvement bonds from the point of annexation forward needs to be voted for by all the taxpayers and voters in the newly expanded district. The existing bond indebtedness at the time of annexation of Albion is paid by the Albion taxpayers, and the indebtedness at the time of the annexation that Marshall has accrued is paid by the taxpayers of Marshall. We're not recommending that both of those taxes get combined. Any new or future bond indebtedness, as I said, or renewed non-homestead millages are approved and paid for by the combined taxpayers and voters of the newly expanded Marshall Public Schools District. Current due diligence is being performed on building appraisals, because we have to get appraisals on the buildings in Albion. Existing assets and liabilities, uncovering anything that we haven't uh, seen at this point. Human resources and what that means for the um, teacher contracts in both districts. Uh, what that means for any existing contracts individually with employees that we may have, to con may have to incur. Grants and services that are available, contracts, legal ramifications, stakeholder concerns, and other socio-political issues existing or unfolding. And as you probably saw in the press, the Albion City Council voted on a 4-1 referendum not to support the annexation unless they received five, I'm sorry, Four to three, thank you. I meant to say that. Four to three, um, unless five points of interest are addressed with the city council. Three of those five I can't address because I, I really don't have a crystal ball and I can't guarantee that there's going to be a public school in Albion. I'm going to do everything I can, but I can't guarantee that. So the operating revenues and assets that come with an annexation Let's talk about the 18 mills right now. Every district that I'm aware of has an 18 mills uh, operational millage on non-homestead properties. With or without annexation, this is how it works. If annexation occurs, the 18 mills non-homestead that's generated in Albion becomes the 18 mills that we would generate. And 18 mills in the Albion School District currently generates $1.5 million annually, okay? If we didn't annex, and let's say the school district had to dissolve, and the county had to come in and repurpose or redraw the boundaries, we would get whatever 18 mills is generated by that population of people that live in the boundary we get given to us or assigned to us by the county. We also take on whatever debt and whatever liabilities are associated with that section that gets assigned to us by the county intermediate school district. So you can see you start dwindling the resources on the 18 mills. And while we are on that, school of choice, we've been an open school of choice district way before I got here. The open school of choice district means that we have an open school of choice and we cannot deny any student choosing to come to Marshall, if it's opened, for any other reason except for falsification of their application 
or that they have history of disciplinary action that we can say we're not interested in dealing with. Other than that, we have to take school of choice students. The voters in Marshall have come up to me a couple times during our bond campaign and for the last four years while we finish our improvements saying, how is that fair that you have a number of students in school of choice coming to Marshall and they don't pay taxes to come here for our facilities? Well, that's true. They do generate revenue for us to operate. They generate revenue for us to maintain all the great programs and the multiple services we provide our kids every day. But they don't pay taxes. So if we just did nothing and we waited for school of choice to occur in January and we took a, a huge influx, because it could possibly be the case, those kids will come, they'll generate revenue, but we'll get no 18 mils revenue from the, from the taxation. So the only way you get full 18 mils from the Albion district is through annexation. Per pupil foundation allowance. It's calculated at a daily rate for any students that come in mid-year. So when students come in school of choice, roughly you can assume that we're going to be um, calculating 50% of the FTE that generates from that student. So we would get Let's say we had 117 students come over. I doubt that they'll all come over from sixth grade to, to eighth. But if we had 117, don't kill me on the math, we figure we would generate about $430,000 for those students coming in for the rest of the year. And we would right now, without even considering transportation and other logistics, we would spend at least $370,000 on staffing and services to those kids. This is not a big money maker. It's not intended to be. It's intended to serve kids. But it's intended to make sure we cover our costs and we don't put the district in financial peril. Because the last thing we want to do is join two districts and have both of them fail. And we certainly have the, an obligation from my seat in Marshall to take care of the interests of this district, first and foremost. And then all those students that come to us and get full foundation allowance applied to them for the coming years as long as we retain them in our system. There are federal title dollars and state at-risk funds that are generated from the population of students that each district has. We just uh, celebrated our 2015 National Blue Ribbon um, School, Gordon Elementary, this year. And one of the reasons why we got that award for exemplary academic performance was because we were in the economically disadvantaged group category because we had 41% economically disadvantaged over the time of the five, five years that we had to um, calculate the uh, uh, student achievement. Albion has a few more economically disadvantaged students and they generate, because of that, more title dollars and more at-risk funds. We still have to sort through how does that all equate when we actually do an annexation. And then there's line item 22G for the district annexation and consolidation. It's a competitive grant through the Michigan Department of Ed, and I'll mention that in a little bit. And then there's local and state dollars or resources that come from grantors, community partners, and the legislature. When we did the cooperative agreement with the high school, in 2013, we went to our legislators and asked for some support to bridge the funding loss of title dollars between the kids coming from Albion to Marshall, because the kids still need the services, but the money stays in the district that they come from in which it's calculated. So the legislature said, good point, and they asked the governor to do an appro a special appropriation of $350,000 the first year to help us bridge that gap. The second year, we didn't go after that money. We probably should have, but we didn't. This year, we went after the money again in 31H, and we got two years commitment for $300,000 this year and next year to help bridge the cost of serving our kids. That's creative. That's innovative stuff with the legislature. 
some unknowns, and there are a lot, and I'm not going to oversimplify, but I'm going to try to give you an idea of this. Enrollment at the time of annexation is an unknown. School of Choice is coming up in January. There is a possibility that Albion could lose a number of more students, partly because of School of Choice, partly because of what's all in the press and the nasty negative things that have been said. But somehow people are going to look at that and go, should I stay or should I go? And as I say in a little bit later date, they have five school districts right now that are busing into Albion's community and taking their kids out. So an unknown is how many kids are we really going to have when we get to annexation? And will there be a critical mass of students in grades K through 5 that will allow us to do a, a bona fide and viable and high quality elementary school in the Albion community? Also in that competitive grant, there's, there's a line, that line item is for, uh, it's called 22G, that's the line item if you want to look it up in the state budget. They hold right now $5 million in that line item. It is a competitive grant. Right now we don't see anybody necessarily in the uh, process as far along as we would be on the 22nd of December, but there could be. And then a committee of uh, school finance officers from around the state review the grants and make an award of the grant and how much that award's going to be. Is that a pot of five million? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And the, um, the um, oh, I, his name slips at me. The, the author of that bill um, has indicated that if he needed to with other school districts, coming through these kind of processes in the future, he would consider going back to legislature and trying to increase that pot of uh, money in that, in that line item. Another unknown is the increased cost of uh, personnel and instruction, transportation supplies that must be sustainable over time. We will calculate that because we have to write the grant and the grant dollars can help us um, cover the cost of any additional services we have to provide along with the foundation grant or the foundation money per pupil that comes in because of those students. But once we have that figured out, there will all obviously be sometimes things that come up that we didn't anticipate. And then determining the use of existing facilities still in operation at the time of annexation and the liquidation of two facilities, whether we sell them or we raise them, the Albion community has to weigh in on that. What do they want to do with that? Give us some guidance in that. So we're not sure what that cost is going to be. There are some operational risks. There's going to be a higher concentration of students coming from different learning environments with different expectations than that of Marshall Middle School. And that's just not the Albion students. That's any school of choice student we have coming in. And we did an analysis of the data, which I'll be releasing soon, to demonstrate that out of all the schools that we touch in our boundaries, we do a better job with socioeconomic um, uh, students in their performance, bar none. And overall, in our performance, we do a better job than all of our, our uh, uh, constituent districts. But the bottom line is, they're coming from a different set of expectations. And they have to be um, taught, encouraged, supported, make sure that they can um, acclimate to our standards, our, our rules, our expectations. Logistics for transporting younger students, grades 6 through 8, instead of what we're currently doing with grades 9 through 12, uh, a longer distance to school. That's, that's, a, that's an operational risk. I don't know if it's going to take more staff. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but we'll work it out. The timing between a decision to serve the Albion Middle School students and their actual attendance in Marshall. That's going to be an unknown operational risk. We might have students, if it's too long, students might select out. If it's too short, they might select out. So we don't really know the impact. 
having enough support available to help a higher number of external middle school students adjust and acclimate to the Marshall Middle School culture, its climate, and its learning environment. And then change always brings some level of instability and disruption to existing systems. That's just a systemic theorem. What annexation brings? It brings a 22G competitive grant with $5 million available for what they say is the annexing and cons or consolidation of districts or ISDs. And like I said, we think that we're the, the one competitor. We might have one competitor for those dollars. We're not even sure yet. Support from the Department of Treasury to help address Albion's operation deficit. They have been working with us nonstop, and they've been working with legislators to figure out how do we hold Marshall harmless of incurring debt after the annexation is over. Because what I don't want to do is, is, is stretch out debt that we have to incur over a long period of time and still be paying that off. We want to have the resources available enough to take care of the debt for the Albion taxpayers and for the district annexing and then be able to start fresh and move forward. I wouldn't be doing this if I thought, and I won't do it if I think it's putting our district in peril financially. Support for the Department of Treasury, support from the Michigan Department of Education to navigate state and federal grants. They did a great job with us when we did the cooperative agreement with high school. We're going to need to do the same thing with them because there's no cookie cutter out there about how to do annexation. It applies to every unique district that gets in, involved in a partnership like this. And then support from Albion College to provide community-centered school in Albion. I've had ongoing conversations with Mari Ditzler. Dr. Ditzler's in the audience today. I'm going to ask him to come up and say a few words. But he's committed to, and his college and his board are committed, or trustees, are committed to providing and supporting a quality educational system that serves the Albion District. And if we're the partner, he's behind that. So we have to work with him and figure out how can we think big about having a community-centered school in Albion that we can afford, the kids want to go to, and then maybe even some parents that live here and work in Albion may choose to take their own kids to. So that's kind of the visioning that we're thinking about. Some win-wins for annexation. It allows us to have a fully leveraged pre-K through grade 16 program. We have great start readiness program for four-year-olds that are income eligible. Albion has Head Start located in their facilities. All the way up to trade certifications through our early college in partnership with CACC, two-year associate's degree with Kellogg Community College, or even a four-year bachelor's degree with Albion College or other institutions of higher learning. And if you haven't seen the press, Albion has started their fellowship scholarships, legacy scholars in Albion. And they offer 10 full-ride scholars scholarships to um, young people that have been educated in the Albion schools, have gone on to high school, demonstrate their capabilities of being able to perform well at the standards Albion College expects, and is willing to serve the Albion community in community service as part of their payback for the scholarship they get. That's huge. And it's available now in Albion and as we go to consolidation, or I mean, sorry, annexation, we have the potential of working through those details with Albion College. Regional efforts in providing quality educational services to all children, regardless of need or circumstance. We're trying to build a continuum of educational services. So no matter what the circumstance or what the needs, every child can find a, a door to walk through in Marshall Public Schools to have their needs met and to educate and to flourish. We've got the Michigan Youth Challenge Academy for dropouts from around the state that we educate over in Battle Creek. We have the first ever early college that can soon become a middle college for all high school students, whether they're, um, e uh, whether they're non-traditional or traditional. That's something that's in our sights that we might be able to develop. 
New partnerships forged with businesses, government entities, nonprofits, and communities to expand opportunities for our students across a larger geographic area. A Marshall district representing close to 18,000 taxpayers, feasibly serving over 3,000 students, and operating, a four -year, operating with a four-year institution of higher learning in Albion College and a two-year community college in KCC, all with locations within the Marshall Public Schools District. That's annexation. Let me talk about exploring an expanded cooperative agreement for the middle school by second semester. There's a lot of rumors out there and I want to try to address these as much as I can. Every year we are in a reactive mode to school of choice at the beginning of the school year and at the middle of the school year. And when I say reactive mode, technically the window opens and it closes the Friday, the first Friday in the semester in which they're being educated. So kids can choose to come to Marshall by school of choice all the way up to the first Friday of their school semester. When we get the final count, we have to adjust classroom size, we have to adjust teacher assignment, we have to adjust how many new classrooms we have to add and if we have to add new personnel. And we have to do all of that while kids are being educated. And usually that's educated with a substitute teacher until we can get a certified and highly qualified teacher in place. Every year, every semester, we deal with that in a reactive mode. We are an open school of choice. Conditions are such that we could see a big impact coming up in January because of the circumstances in Albion. Or we can be in a proactive mode. Dave Turner spoke to the group last Monday. He's busy tonight, I'll tell you why. But we could expand our cooperative agreement and it's being considered. It hasn't been voted on, not by Albion Board, they have not invited us to do it. Not by Marshall Board, we have not taken that to action. But it's a consideration for us to investigate. And the good thing about transparency is while you're investigating, everybody knows you're investigating. Bad news about it is while you're investigating, everybody knows you're investigating. <laughs> and so everybody has a little bit of information to be dangerous. And all I'm telling you is we're just investigating is it feasible, is it possible for this to be pulled off with least amount of disruption and with this, the most seamless approach to educating our kids. Albion would need to request through board action on their upcoming board meeting on 12-15 to serve their middle school 6th, 8th graders at second semester by expanding the cooperative agreement. Marshall would need to accept through board action on our upcoming board meeting on 12-16 to expand the cooperative agreement to include the, the middle school students grades six through eight from Albion. Determining, so proactive mode allows Marshall Middle School to determine before the start of the second semester a more definitive number of new students enrolling in the middle school estimated to be close to 125 could be a little bit more. We right now have 504 students in the middle school. So that's almost, well, it's gonna be one six, close to one six, it'll be coming in 15%. If we get that many, or we could get more. But it allows us a better opportunity to look what's coming and start planning around that. Otherwise, we're just reacting to what shows up. Yes? No, we don't. We're an open school of choice district. That gets determined at the beginning of the year. You don't change that in midstream. Um, pardon me? Yes. Well, within the board. Within the board, huh? We have been doing that for a number of years. A lot of districts do that. And some districts prescribe exactly how many slots they have available at each grade level. 
So that's the circumstance. Um, it allows us to have time to prepare the additional, for additional students by recruiting and hiring of staff. Even with the staff that are over in Albion that are teaching grades six through eight, we have a master agreement in Marshall that requires us to post a position that's available internally for anybody that wants to switch their assignments. And then when we, when we close that window, we open it up externally. And any, any teacher that is currently teaching in Albion with these kids that would like to come over and teach with us, they can come over and interview for that position. And of course, we would want to see that work out because they have certified and highly qualified teachers teaching those grades. But we have to go through the process. It can't just be a walkover. We have to make sure that we're doing due diligence according to the agreements that I have in our master agreement. It allows our middle school to schedule all students for second semester in course offerings and specials and communicate this to parents and students before class begins. We're not talking about reassigning existing teachers in Marshall. We're not talking about reassigning all the students across the board. We're going to go with what they already committed to as much as we can. There may be some changes, but there always is with school of choice. So it's no different than what we'd be dealing with. It allows Marshall school, Middle School to engage our parents and stakeholders on the anticipated impact and the adjustments to accommodate new students coming in once we know how many we're talking about. It allows us to have time to, for teachers to better plan instruction and coordinate support for more external students during the period of time through the holiday and through the month of January until our first semester begins in late January. It allows us with an expanded uh, cooperative agreement to utilize existing staff support Albion has in place for their middle school students through title grants and, and that grant expires in September 30, 2016. If we don't do the uh, cooperative agreement, those teachers or those resources would remain in the Albion Middle School continuing to serve whatever students that they have present for the second semester. Yes. Oh, for every year? Yeah. yeah, right now our agreement is um, evergreen unless one of us gives the other district a 30-day notice that we would like to end the agreement at the end of the semester, end of the teaching year. And so that would be very similar to it. We would use the same um, requirements and then, it, and then we would just simply expand the grade levels. Instead of just 9 to 12, it would be 6 to 12. just for transition, um, get the kids in. Uh, first off, for the children that come over, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for them. Um, for our students, it expands our, our, uh, our student base, provides us revenues right away for the, year, for the remainder of the year, allows us to have a more global environment, teaching learning environment. Um, and for the kids from Albion, They'll get specials, they'll get electives, they'll get phys ed, because we do phys ed four times a, a week. They'll get many more services that they've been gone, have gone without for the first semester. No, the cooperative agreement simply extends the cooperative agreement. It would be a risk that Albion would have to take because they're going to lose revenue. But at the same time, if they don't, find a partner and let's say we say no to the cooperative agreement or to the annexation or we find out for whatever reason it's not going to be feasible for us to do if we back out they got to they have to finish the year treasury is guaranteed that they'll finish the year without closing 
but they've also said they will not be able to function independently in the coming year after the school year is over with. Pardon me? They would dissolve, and I, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Currently, I've asked my middle school administrators to investigate the feasibility of expanding the cooperative agreement and to share information to Albion parents about our offerings. I did that two weeks ago, and Dave Turner went to his staff and said, what do you think? Are we capable? Is it possible? Is this feasible to do in a short period of five weeks? And the first reaction was a lot of anxiety and a lot of, a lot of fear. There was also a lot of, yeah, we can do it. I believe we can do it. I believe in our staff, and I think we can pull this off very well. But it will be a challenge. And then the second time we had a meeting with them, we talked through and dispelled some of the myths and some of the rumors that were out there. One of the rumors was, Dr. Davis, we heard a rumor that you're going to lay all of us off and hire us all back in in different teaching positions. And I said, no, no, no. Not far, I mean, farthest from the truth. There's, no, there's not going to be any changes in, in teacher assignments unless a teacher voluntarily says, I want to do this instead of this. Um, so we addressed that with our teachers. And then we talked to our Albion um, uh, board members over in Albion and said, how can we share information, get the, get the word out to your constituents without creating a whole lot of angst and so forth in the community? And how can we share with them what we have to offer so they see what's available? We're not doing this right now as a point of recruitment. We're giving it to them as a point of sharing information. Because if they look at what they're currently getting and what they could get, and how we schedule classes, and what our class sizes are currently looking at and what it could go to, I think they're going to see that and go, OK, I get it. I'm, I'm not so anxious. And they can wait for that decision that comes up next week. So Dave Turner right now is not here because he's hosting um, parents from Albion at the middle school to talk to them about what we have to offer and let them walk around our building. We brought over 117 sixth grade through eighth grade today, just like we bring all our fifth graders in, which are about 170 kids or 160 kids, and we walk them through the middle school so they can see what does this new environment look like. It went, it went very well. The kids were excited. They left. Um, their parents came in that could make it here tonight, and he's talking to them about it, and he's saying no decision's been made. We just want you to see what this is about. But make no mistake about it, if a, a cooperative agreement can't be brought forth and we don't want to do it, we are still going to market to that pool of students because if we don't capture School of Choice students out of Albion, somebody else is going to. And it will be putting us at a distinct disadvantage financially and operationally over the next number of years. Yes? Yeah, um, I can't tell you in sixth grade, I think in sixth grade, and don't quote me, but it's around 26 in sixth grade per class. Um, it's around 27 to 28 in seventh grade, and it's 30 students, and sometimes some classes have 31 students in the eighth grade. And so what we want to do is obviously not go higher than that, and we want to make sure we have ample resources to make sure the class size stay there or stay under. I, I don't know until I can see the students that we're talking about. Well, with the number of teachers we would bring over, and it depends on what grade levels we're talking about. You know, if we get 60 uh, sixth grade students and we bring over one teacher, we could accommodate that and keep the class size around 28. If we brought two teachers over from the, from the sixth grade, we'd certainly even be able to decrease class size. But we have to do it financially within our means. So there's a lot of work that has to go through that. But that's, that's a good question, something we need to publicize. Um,
So it will provide an increased student population this current year and to help our budget and through retention, we will be able to help our operational budget in future years. What we found about students' school of choice is students in school of choice a lot of times bounce around sometimes semester to semester, sometimes year to year from one building to another or one school to another school system. What we found about our cooperative agreement is we're still serving 74% of the students that came over in 2013 in our high school. And we lost a proportion of those kids to school of choice because they realized that they didn't either like our environment or they didn't like the standards or they didn't feel they could perform or they just wanted to go with friends that went to Concord or some other district. We also had some kids that were dismissed based on behavior or disciplinary action and we had kids move out and then we have some kids that haven't been resurfacing in a public school system in our system in Michigan so we're not sure if they're um, dropouts or if they're just not in the system or they haven't showed up because they're out of state. But 74% of the kids of the 158 that started the high school in 2013 from Albion are still in the high school today and we're graduating 63 this year from that group of 185. Thank you. Currently I have, okay, so, um, so Dave's doing that. Mr. Turner is going to make himself available and he's going to communicate this through an email blast tomorrow at, from 8 in, and to 11 in the morning and Friday until from 8 to noon to have further conversations with parents of students that are currently in our middle school system. So folks are invited to come in and ask him any questions they want, say whatever they want to say about that, hear what he has to say, and he's going to help gauge what, what that response is going to be. We're also surveying the parents from Albion about whether they think that this school system could meet their needs, their child's needs, whether they'd be interested in coming second semester or not until next year or not at all. And hopefully some reasons why they might choose that. So it helps us inform the Albion board and helps us inform our board should this question come up for action next week. Yeah, I think it'd be a great idea. Right. So, right. So all of that's coming, and Dave will work his extra hours, and so will Mike, in regards to making themselves available to answer any questions that you've got. So, in closing on this, Without annexation, the Albion school system will dissolve most likely in the coming year. When dis dissolution occurs, the uh, Calhoun Intermediate School District Superintendent and the board have to redraw the boundaries of, a contiguous, of the contiguous districts that serve the dissolving district's students. Randy? Yes. Yeah, they're going to have to make a decision and they're going to have to take all things into consideration to make it a balanced um, division. So they're going to have to take about socioeconomic conditions, um, liabilities of buildings that's, that sit in one uh, newly carved out area versus another. They're going to have to look at all of that. And who they think can absorb the debt the best. Pardon me? And who they think can absorb the debt the best. Yeah. In a dissolution, a newly drawn district boundary for Marshall Public Schools brings with it new territory, new students living within that territory, a bigger tax base, and any assets and also any liabilities from the old Albion District that falls within the newly formed district boundaries of Marshall. These changes would come to Marshall 
without the financial supports offered by the state under annexation or consolidation, as I described. So we would be operating without a net, without a fallback. That's the state law. That's not something we asked for. This whole situation is not what Albion, current Albion staff and, and administrators and board members have asked for or community. And we certainly didn't ask for it. But it's a situation that we have to deal with and address. Or else it's going to be done to us and we'll have to deal with it and react to it rather than be proactive. Final slide, I promise, and then I'll, yeah. If, if the Albion District did a dissolution, obviously they have no students to send to us in our cooperative agreement every eighth grade graduation class. And that would have an impact. I believe most of the students that are already in our high school would stay in our high school but School of Choice would eventually take those students out and we wouldn't have a consistent relationship with Albion in having those students all come in except for Open School of Choice. The final slide, I promise. We will make this presentation available on our website. We're videotaping the, um, the session, including all of your comments and questions and concerns. We'll make that available on our website at some point so you can plug into that. We want you to keep engaged with our board members, my office, and building administrators as we navigate these waters. With whatever action we take to more directly partner with Albion schools, we must be sure that we are not putting our district in financial stress or at risk. I have to do that. That's my job. We maintain the high expectations and academic standards of our district. I have to do that. That's my job. We are able to, and we are able to sustain the growth and expansion of our district over time. We don't want to do this and then turn around and have to lay off and cut and cut and cut. We want to do this as sustainable so we can stabilize and hopefully start growing our enrollment population every year. We continue to drive our decisions by being student-centered and with equity and access in mind for all those that we serve. And right now, that includes every school of choice student that comes in our buildings. So with that, I'm going to open this up for further questions. I would like you to come up to the mic if you could so that everybody can hear or shout loud enough so we say, yeah, we get it. Randy, I want you to expand a couple things. Sure. Uh, you mentioned the word do away with the agreement if some certain things didn't happen. I've been lucky enough to be with you and Richard at a couple of meetings in Albion College when the, in the uh, state treasury was there and they almost guaranteed us I say almost because they haven't guaranteed us but they almost guaranteed us between the grants and everything else they make sure we don't have the debt to carry and some of the phone calls I got people don't understand the debt you have the bonded debt and you have the two and a half million school aid debt and that 1.8 million would you make sure they understand what debt we're talking about sure because uh, there's a difference and the other thing is when we say we want to withdraw maybe the only reason we would withdraw if we do the vote in a week or two to do the annexation. January 11th. We, we, if we move ahead to go ahead with that, the intent would be to move ahead to meet the deadline, the, the deadlines. But if we do not get the guarantees in time that we aren't stuck with the debt, we would not proceed past that. That's what, I, you know, we're not going to go into this thing plan I'm pulling out unless the state doesn't come through with the money. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to represent that we're tentative on this because when I do bring a recommendation on a resolution to our board, I'm going to make sure, and Becky Jones, my um, director of uh, um, uh, operations and finance, we're going to make sure that we have all of our, answer, our questions answered and we have assurances, and right now we're getting really good assurances, not only from Treasury, but from MDE about the 22G grant, and also our legislators. We have our representatives at the table. We have Senator Knopf's. We're talking about what are you going to do to make sure we're where we need to be. I've been talking with Mari Ditzler about Albion College. I'll let him say a few words in a second. Um, and I, I, I said, let's partner. If we're going to provide a community-centered school with K through 5 in Albion, let's partner 
to make sure we can do that even if we get challenged with the number of students that are currently in the hallways of that building because we have to be able to sustain it so that kids will come back to a high quality educational system and we and it and that community like our community doesn't deserve anything less um, let me go back to the back Can someone help me with that? Okay. And and like I said, you can you can see generally what the. That's a dissolution. So you can, you can probably look at that or Google it or contact the state if you want to go around and look at any of the impact that that had on the communities involved. It's not an easy process. It's not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of challenges to it. I, I, I'm not trying to tell you there won't be. Um, we just have to look at the bigger picture and figure out can we move it forward. Did you have a question? Me? No? We can't. Randy, you need to come up with Mike. We can't hear can you come? Well, I, I can share with you the comments that were made by our students collectively, because you know we've been working really hard on um, helping to um, bring the kids together, give them an opportunity to meet and work with each other, listen to each other, problem solve, et cetera. Comments that we've been getting through the high school process, and I understand middle school is a little bit different, but they've said that the benefits are having more friends or more peers to choose from on friendships, to um, that they like the diversity. It's diversity from both experiences. The, the students in Albion were looking forward to more diversity in Marshall and vice versa. The Marshall was looking forward to having more diversity in their hallways. The challenging different perspectives on culture and thought and creativity and support on performance and skill sets and all of those kind of things seem to be what our students have expressed to me over time and even publicly in board meetings and so forth about what what it's meant to them now it's not all rosy you know every time you bring over a group of kids there's going to be kids that are not performing well in the old school and not performing well here when they get here a lot of those kids tend to select themselves out there's going to be kids that will get into the rigor and expectations of our system and feel that they can't compete or that they can't perform. And we'll continue to work with them to help elevate their performance. The middle school, it, it's a little bit different. You know, there's sixth through eighth graders, and they're just starting to develop their self-esteem, self-concept, sense of self. We're gonna have to do whatever we can between now and let's say January if we're gonna do the cooperative agreement, but certainly before next year for annexation, to start putting our kids together like we did with the high schoolers, to talk about having them have shared learning experiences now so they get to get familiar with each other, break down some of those barriers. Yeah. <clears throat> Louder. I need to borrow Vicks. 
so what we, what we anticipated doing was going into a deficit position, and we were going to go into a plan for about three years to come back out of a deficit. So this was after there were, there were cuts in the per pupil funding at the state level. What we saw is we brought in the Albion students into the high school, and they became our students as part of that cooperative agreement was, as we saw $5 million of additional revenue came in. What that $5 million of revenue meant is that my second grader and my sixth grader got to keep all the programs that we have and the wonderful programs we have in Marshall. What Albion has seen over the years is those programs have been steadily cut year after year. And what I've heard repeatedly from Albion parents is we've, we've forgotten what was available to a school that has the array of services to offer. So part of it, absolutely everything Dr. Davis said is absolutely something that the kids are going to benefit from. But fundamentally, we're going to maintain our programs and we're going to continue to grow our programs. I mean, my kids go to the zoo. My kids go to Chicago. My kids go to Mackinac Island. All these things are, are, are fantastic programs our schools have. We're going to continue to do those. We're going to offer them to the, the Albion kids that come over as we educate them in Albion. So that's really important to remember. To, to, to add to that, too, as we talked about additional resources that would come with the kids, um, through their title dollars that expire on the 30th of September of next year, we would get an, a social worker for general education, a math coach, a math academic support specialist, a reading specialist, a technology specialist to assist in, in incorporating technology within the instructional day for teachers. Those services exist in Albion still even though they cut all the other things out because it's grant funded. So we would at least be able to benefit from that for the remainder of the year if we expanded the cooperative agreement. On top of that, we would be looking at making sure that we have additional counselor support, additional secretarial, a dean of students, our media specialist back, uh, which we cut, and somewhere around four to five core teachers and some special ed teachers. So you can see, and that's not just targeted for Albion students, it's for all students in the Marshall District or for the middle school. So there's some benefits and additions that come with those things, kind of an economy of scale uh, that we add to our overall structure when we, when we implement this. There was a question, yeah, back. I, I'm absolutely sure that's going to happen before or right at, right when we do the vote in January 11th, we'll have a good picture. We'll have uh, assurances before we get to the uh, Albion's uh, need to call for election to know whether or not the resources are all there. Any of the expenses we're spending, whether it's us or it's Albion right now for this issue, is covered under the uh, tw uh, 22G grant. So we're going to write that into the grant as well. And they told us we could start drawing down on that now, even before we would go to a vote for, um, for consolidation. Yeah, that, that is something that um, we're looking at in regards to the taxation levels in Albion and the taxation levels in Marshall. Yeah. We are, our goal is to get to a 5% fund balance that's, that's restricted fund balance in our budget and keep it at 5% for every year hereafter and not spend that core at all. And that's, to me, that's what the state's law, um, law now requires every district to have or you get oversight. And I'd much rather see us get in a healthier way with the state than have to worry about people looking over our shoulder on whether or not we're making the right decisions on, on budgeting. So we're going to be really, really uh, strict at that. This year, we did give a little bit of off-schedule increase for the um, employees. Last, uh, the first year that we did the cooperative agreement in 2013, we also took on the Michigan Youth Challenge Academy, and no one, myself included, all the way through the district, got no increases at all that year. And I said, just stay with us. No increases, no advancements on steps, nothing. 
and we will then try to bring it back or give you some uh, assurances that you can get something increased in the, in the near future. But nobody got anything that year. Our, our teachers and staff and administrators work very hard to work with us on these issues. And for a long time, we've, we've not done a lot of development on that side because the economy is not good. School funding is not good. Um, they cut us by $470 per pupil back in 2010, 2011. We had a fund balance that was over $1.2 million back then, and it was because of that cut that we ended up having to spend that fund balance down. And, and we weren't able to adjust our budget quick enough for that. So I, I think there's, it, it's a big picture, and, and school finance is a big picture, but there's some assurances that we're working on about building up to the 5% fund balance, making sure whatever model we bring in is sustainable, um, and that it's adequate, and that we can maintain the high standards that we have as far as service. Back here. Can, go ahead. Right. So with Dave's conversations, the administration's conversations with parents, and my availability on that, we're going to start getting the message out there so people know exactly what's going on. Um, you know, Deanna, that we work really hard about getting our students together and have the opportunity to do some joint problem solving and so forth. Um, there's an opportunity for us. I'm working with Albion College right now. We have someone that does the big read. Um, and, and there's been some really good students that have come out of Marshall that actually played leadership roles in that. We've had three years of developing student leaders at the high school that have then come back and helped at the youth symposiums in the summertime. We're going to tap all of those resources together, bring them together with all the students that reside in, in Albion at the 6th through 8th grade and have opportunities for them to come together for some learning and some sharing and some relationship building. Um, we would encourage every parent to consider having their children experience that and participate in that or to help if you have non, you know, like lack of information that you need to help alleviate any concerns your child may have through the teachers and through the administration we will make sure that the messages get out. But it's a short window. I'm not kidding you. It's five weeks. And we're going to be really busy over the holidays working on this, but it's five weeks, no matter what you say. When we did the 2013 transition to high school, we had July and August and one week in September to get that, that coordinated. Yes. My name is Hope Horton. I currently have two School of Choice students in your building. They've been here for nine years, their entire career. I take offense to your comment that these School of Choice children come with nothing. Last year, I accumulated 500 volunteer hours at Walters Elementary for you, unpaid, unrecognized. I would like to correct your statement that School of Choice do not pay into your tax basis. I pay non-homestead taxes for farmers into Sheridan, Marengo, and Marshall Townships. That's three school districts. I am a parent that's appalled by the way this has been handled with our middle school students. I would like to know if the, it is true that Albion sent home a letter to their middle school students last week to inform their parents that the transition would happen at semester break. Is there any Albion parents or school board members that could answer that? Can, can I first? Why are they notified, Randy? And you haven't notified any of us. Yeah. There has been no transparency. Can, well, let me, let me first respond to your comment that I said that school of choice kids bring nothing. I didn't say that. 
what I said is school of cho choice kids come into this district and they come from all over the place and they come from different environments and they have to have the opportunity to adjust and acclimate. I'm not sure what you're referring to is me saying that they don't bring anything into the system. The other thing is I said other citizens in this community have challenged me about how come we're allowing school choice kids coming in and they don't pay anything in the bond because that bond initiative has been going on. The 18 mills is not the bond initiative. Okay. So that's what I was referring to. So I'm sorry you were offended, but that's well, where I'm coming from. I can now, tell you nine years ago it was closed school of choice because my first child that entered Marshall Public, I had to apply. Okay, so the letter that went out last week, um, the effort on that part, and I don't know what the concerns were, so we do have some Albion people in the audience, but that letter went out as an informational only and not saying that the decision was made. Well, your Albion residence is where I gather the information from today, and they are under the influence that it is a done deal, especially with the transformation in the um, visit today. Yeah. So there's information out there that's wrong. We all know that. That's right. one of the reasons why exactly. I'm here. Exactly. So okay. we're trying to correct that as much as we possibly can. And like I said, um, it may come to a decision by Albion that they say, no, we're not, you know, they, they get their parents coming in and saying we don't want to do it. That's fine. I would be We're, concerned if I was an Albion parent putting my child in this situation mid-year. Right. There's a lot of anxiety on both sides. I understand from the, from the student's perspective, I just want you to know that all the points I made about being more proactive and being in control of that change versus being reactive is our primary purpose of seeing how we can make that as seamless as possible. But given the circumstances, until those decisions are made, which they have not been, we need to continue to explore what the possibilities are. And I am willing to talk to any of them. I'm nine years in the school district as school of choice. We don't bounce around. This is home. Yep. And we want to maintain that. Good. But we need to know that there's a steady foundation for them. Okay. Transparency is key to the success of this merger, and you're failing to provide that. By speaking to our students without speaking to us first has created a lot of misinformation. Okay. Duly noted, so we'll bring that back to the administration. I also attended the Homer School Board when this was discussed. They provided annexing paperwork, the state website, and had a state representative there. You failed to do that in your forums. Has the ISD given you any um, recommendation towards us? Have you consulted the ISD? First, we've been talking about the, the, the differences between annexation, consolidation, mm -hmm. and dissolution for some time now in our board meetings. So that information goes out. These forums are trying to give you as much information as we can about that process. Has the ISD given us any recommendations? They've been working with Albion School District in regards to their finances. Um, the superintendent uh, of the ISD has been involved in conversations with Treasury and involved in conversation with MDE. Um, and he's also considering what his role is going to have to be should they dissolve. And so, yeah, um, uh, can I say they've made a recommendation? No, it's not their place to make a recommendation. It's their place to provide services and support. Okay, I can also tell you today, my sixth grader came home after the Albion tour and said that one of the teachers in the classroom she was in chose to shut the door and not accept or welcome those students into that situation. That's an internal issue. If we're actually opening our arms to these students, every individual needs to do that. Okay. Wait a second. Mike? Yes, I'd like to answer the one question on the letter. Can you come up? Yeah, I'm Mike Behrman. Um, I'm the president of Albion School Board. And yes, there was a letter sent out. And the letter was not as clear as what we thought it should be. So the next day we sent out a second letter clarifying that we had not made a decision, there was no decisions made yet, and that we would take, and this was for information only. So there was, therefore we did try to clarify what that first letter was. Exactly, it's like the first one. And then there, then there was also a robocall that went out. So we, were tr we, we made a mistake, 
but we tried to take and um, take care of rectify that mistake as soon as we possibly could. And it was we took we we've gotten a lot out of it and going where we need to. Yes. Well, it was it was they were sent out by the same. The school sent. Yes. Right. But 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 it was all sent out by the school. It went through the school. And, and, and okay, but it, thank but you, uh, Jerry. Thank you, Mr. Davis, for your presentation this this evening. I'm here as a representative of the people of the city of Marshall and the Marshall School District. So may I take your position at the podium to bring these attention to the board and to the people of this community. Thank you. Jerry, actually, can you just do it from the microphone? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked by many, many people in the Marshall School District to give you this message for them. Why me? Why me? I was born and raised in Marshall School District. I'm 82 years old. I'm married for 59 years. I'm the father of five children. I was a banker for 25 years. I was a real estate broker and investor for 32 years, and that's my current position at this time. I was a member of the Board of Education for 12 years president of the board for four years. So the people of Marshall think that I have been around the block, but I am a very poor card player. As their speaker, please hear me out. I've been told by many that through my experience in council, I have helped them to understand what in the hell is going on. In Marshall, in the state and in the nation. Subject this evening is annexation. Less than five school districts have annexed in the past 20 years according to those of records. Does this tell you school board, what an example. Many districts have faced Albion's issue before, but none that I can imagine has the consequences that will be poured out on our community if annexation is accepted by our board. This is Albion only, Albion only. We have other problems around. Battle Creek Schools, which is the best financed in the state of Michigan, have a management problem to the point that they are even considering trying to annex to another company. What do we do if uh, De Concha, if De Concha or, 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 or um, our surrounding people decide that they want to annex or send their people to this area? What's happening, people, is that people are not taking other schools as a result of what's happened in Albion. What's happened in Albion is a management problem, surely management. 
because they've not offered the programs or the facilities that's necessary to take care of this situation. A uh, couple more minutes, Jerry. No, I'm representing the people of Marshall. You've given up. You have given. You have given an hour and a half. Jerry, other people. Every, yes, I know. I got a few you minutes. Have to, you have to respect other people. I respect them. That's why I'm telling you. Albion Superintendent Harper and Davis have already made the decision for annexation. How do you know? How do you know this? Because they're already talking about. In a few days, they're going to be bringing the grades over here to Marshall. Now that's without the acceptance or anything else of the people in that community. That's not fair. But annexation, we have nothing, not even Philip Boone, director of the Michigan Department of Education last week in Albion, a meeting which I attended, every question asked the by the Albion board of him, no answer. It was great for me to be sitting in the stadium because Boone must have been a star running back at Michigan State for he dodged every question until he was laid out by the left guard because he never ran through the center uh, of the line before and the people in the center knew these jobs and they had experience. Please don't interrupt it. Don't depend upon the state of Michigan don't depend upon the state of Michigan to help you in annexation. Jerry. They will give you the same answer as running back Boone did. You work it out personally, board. You Jerry. work it out. Jerry, we understand that you're not for annexation. No, I'm, I'm there for school of choice, and I'm going to give you the many reasons why school of choice is the best, because this is one problem. You're going to have a problem from the surrounding schools. But by schools of choice, that is the only way that you're going to be able to control this situation. With all due respect, I, with, I, all, with all due respect, I think you need to yield to other people that need to ask the questions. I'm talking for all the people here no, that I've. No, you're not. No, no, you are. You are parents. Let's look at it this way: Who pays the majority? Who pays the majority of the taxes? Who pays the majority of the taxes in the school system? 95% of the people are people that are 40 to 100 years old. So we have to give respect to those people and make sure that they're not going to be facing additional taxes. School of choice is the only reason. Why? One minute, Jerry. I cannot believe even discussing annexation with no thoughts of school of choice. We welcome all of the Albion students and any students of other districts by school of choice. Annexation, it will only be hell for all the students, students, parents, schools, city, and businesses. Okay. At present, the Marshall school system Jerry, is you're a solid to, you're have and to greatly end it. respected and proud by all. Jerry, you're going to have to end it. Okay. We owe Jerry. this respect to our school board members. Each and every one of Jerry, our leadership. Jerry, this is not being productive. Yes, you. No, they aren't. They're all talking to themselves. Instead of you. Miss, what's your question? Okay, thank you. I'm just curious if we do annex, what is the plan as far as will K through 8 continue in Albion, 9 through 12 continue in Marshall? Thank you. I know I'm short. Yeah. <laughs> well, Okay, <laughs> a little much, a little much. Will students have an option? Will Albion, you know, or students yeah. over there have an option of which school they go yep. to? How are we going to control there, all of that? The preliminary plan is to figure out how we can design a kindergarten through fifth grade building or class uh, school over in Albion. Um, that would become one of four elementaries then that we operate if annexation mm -hmm. should occur. Um, all the other students, that's why we've been talking a lot about six through eight. Right. All the other students right now, we already have the nine through 12. All the six through eight would be um, uh, transported along with the nine through 12 here. Okay. And we don't have enough space in our elementary to accommodate the number of 200 and some students that would be able to come in um, to our buildings here. So that's also a logistical issue on why you'd want to have a school building remaining in, in Albion. 
So we'd have one elementary remaining in Albion? Yes, yes. And so then three buildings that won't be used then from that point forward? Because there's four now. Yes. Two that aren't used. So we would take that down to one. Well, no, no. Only one oh. there, there's, two being, oh, okay. there's two being used over there right now and two that aren't. And right. so for us to, main, uh, to maintain where they're currently at at the old high school with a swimming pool right. and all the yep. other things, okay. there's a lot of overhead costs on running that building. So if we were to use that building, we'd have to make sure we have multiple programs out of that, out of that building. So I have no idea what that's going to look like yet. Um, and then the other thing that you asked about is we support school of choice, and right. children always have a right, or parents do, to choice their, their um, students wherever they so see fit. Okay, thank you. All right. Eric? Yeah, I don't know, maybe I missed it, but what is the $5 million? Is that going to be capped? Because the, even if you keep one school open, three other schools, two of those are really pretty dilapidated. So if you're going to tear down buildings, um, you know, with their financial debt of a million dollars, whatever they have, that $5 million, yeah. So is the state going to say this is going to be up to five million, but we may have more? Currently, is that is, may be a three-year down the road yeah. plan to demolish buildings, but that's still going to be a debt by us. Eric, currently, it's um, you can draw down the grant award for one year over a three-year period of time. It is capped at five million. Um, each year, that becomes available for competitive grants. And it, because we re get one awarded one year doesn't preclude us from writing for others down the road. So I, I, think, I think Treasury, though, we're talking about the cost, you know, estimated cost of $300,000 to raise a building in, in an appropriate fashion. We're talking about um, the use of the facilities and what would be best. We're talking about the overhead that it costs for them to run the high school in Albion and how just having a K through five would not be able to generate the revenues necessary to pay for that. So we've got all of those things in our sites. We're looking at that and trying to figure out with MDE, with Treasury, and with the, uh, the state budget what we can generate to be able to hold us harmless when we go forward. And that will be decided before our board votes on that, right? Will I, will, I, will not, I will not bring the recommendation if I'm not feeling comfortable with that at all, with all the evidence that we have, and the board won't take my word for it, they're going to have to take a look at the evidence we've generated and, and what the decisions are and where the dollars are coming from. Yes? If I understand correctly, the current operational debt on an annual basis at Albion is $1.8 million. They have, a, they have accrued up to $1.8 million in operational debt on their books as the close of the last school year. It's been building for quite some time. They've been in a deficit elimination for four years now. What is this year's deficit? This year's um, deposit of $26,000. So it's not a deficit, it's not a deficit this year. Okay, most of it's not about the deficit. A lot of it is about Well, we're developing that number because we're taking a look at all of the costs and the liabilities that are out there yet. And we've un we, we know that there's liabilities in regards to loans, short term. Um, Mike mentioned about the cash flow. They have a sinking fund with dollars out there. Um, they have a, a cash flow loan that each district does anyways for state, um, state aid uh, that needs to be paid back. Um, so we, we're putting those all in a row and then sitting down with Treasury to figure out the cost of that. So what dollar figure of that $5 million, if that you think you're going to get, actually goes to paying down the debt? So that would depend on what the state does. On yeah. The that depends on what they would do. Because there, there's a couple of avenues that we can actually get relief from the accumulated debt that is not available to Albion right now if they stood... Now, I, I, we're talking with legislators, we're talking with Treasury and MDE, so, and, the, and state government. So, you, you know, we have to look at all of that. We have to make sure that 
and, and as Vic said, before we went to go to an annexation, we have to be assured that we're going to be held harmless for any carryover of debt after the annexation. Well, we haven't we haven't calculated that yet. When are you going to get this information for the public to understand? Well, we're working. I've come to two of these meetings, and you basically haven't answered any of my questions. Look, I haven't generated a lot of those details yet. Every single day, we're unfolding that stuff, and we're working through it. Well, I'd like to know when that's going to happen. Well, definitely, definitely, we're going to have a very good picture before we get to January 11th, or else we're not going to take motion. No, actually, they pursued me to interview for that. What's what's the point? The board makes the de the board makes the decisions in the direction of this district. Any other questions? Yes, please. Yeah. Why disrupting the school mid year would do? What would it accomplish? And, and, and I truly understand your concern about that. We've talked about it. If we do nothing with it, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the school of choice, choice like we always have. It might be a higher volume, and it's going to be a disruption, anyways, but we'll do the best we can if that's, if that's what we're left with. This projected higher volume is just assumptions. They're right. Based on right. Nothing because the school will remain open whether we do something or not. And, and, the projected higher volume, we do that. Every year we have to figure out how many school of choice are we really going to come in, and we monitor that on a day-by-day -day basis. There's no magic to that. There's no absolutes in that. We just take the kids, make sure that we're vetting them, get them connected, and get them started. There's always a problem with adjustment with school of choice students simply because we need to get them in a class as soon as possible and try not to disrupt the educational process for them or for any other student in the hallways. So I get your anxiety about the timeline. I understand that. Nels? Nels Christensen, whoa, I'm the Albion School Board, but more importantly, I'm the uh, father of a seventh grader. Um, and I, I don't know what I think about extending the cooperative agreement, except that it's um, fast, risky, makes sense, doesn't, you know what I mean? So I, 
I'm not stating position at all right now. We're considering it because it seems like it could be a good idea. But my daughter, um, who's a little bit of a nerd, I have to say, but to, so today, she, I said, well, how did it go? Because she was over here and she was in like an auditorium and people were, there was like a PowerPoint. And I was, like, they, I was like, they made you listen to a PowerPoint? She's like, yeah. And I said, what were you doing? She said, I was taking notes about all the electives I might have. <laughs> because like electives, she doesn't know, elective, that doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, so she, for her, it would be disruptive, as it would be for everybody. Um, whether or not that disruption is worth it, um, from my point of view as a board member, is a complicated thing. Mm -hmm. From her point of view as an 11-year-old, is also a complicated thing, but she sees now things that she would get as a result of that kind of move. But and that thing. Also, oh, true that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but we have, she's been in Albion Public Schools her whole life. We have not and will not school of choice her out. Um, but but she, see, I mean, she sees an academic impact on her. And she, I mean, maybe she's weird in that way, but she thought things like, oh, I could take these classes. And it's like, yeah, you could, and you can't now. Um, I could uh, move from class to class during and have a passing period. I mean, the things that I thought of as being in seventh grade, she doesn't experience. Um, so she would get that thing. And that's not advocation for it. It's just a, an attempt to try to answer that question. Like, there are things that are palpable. Whether it's worth it, I'm not really sure. All right. Thank you. Yes. I'm Ann Clotter. I'm not a parent, but uh, I have concerns. And it seems to me it comes down to either we do it to ourselves or it gets done to us. It's going to happen some way. If we don't do it to ourselves and it's done to us, we lose money business-wise. Is that correct? Am I simplifying it too much? <laughs> a little bit, but, but you're, you're right. I mean, we have to, we're trying to do the best we can with the circumstance that's been presented to us. And we're trying to do it in the best interest of kids. And sometimes we'll disagree with what that looks like, timeline and those types of things. We disagree maybe with the direction we have to go. But we're trying to make the best decision we can for kids. And, and the first hurdle is to address the, the cooperative agreement. The second hurdle is to deal with school of choice, because whether we do the cooperative agreement or not, we're going to have issues with school of choice. And the third hurdle is whether we're going to move forward with an um, uh, annexation vote based on what the state tells us they can do to, to uh, uh, medi uh, mediate all those issues in regards to deficits, because my board has to feel comfortable that we can move forward with that. So, there's time for us to talk through this. There's time for us to get more information out in the hands of people as we develop it. Uh, we are going to be operating uh, or writing the grant fast and furious between now and the 22nd because we want to put a quality piece of work in the hands of Lansing to make that decision. Um, that does not commit us to moving forward with annexation until the board feels comfortable to do so. This time I want to Mari, are you interested in coming up and say a few words from Albion College? I'll be brief. Okay. Yes, time's late, so I, let me just be real brief and, and start out by thanking all of you as residents of Marshall and parents of Marshall and school board members. You didn't have to take on this conversation, but you did. We had to have the conversation at Albion because the state told us that we weren't viable next year and we needed to find someone to work with. But you didn't have to take on the conversation. I have no idea how I would have responded uh, if the school system my children went to had taken on this conversation uh, when they were growing up. Some of you are nervous about it. Some of you have supported it. Some of you have opposed it. But you've done it in a polite and open fashion. I thank you for it. Thank the board for the work that they've done. It doesn't surprise me that you do it because three years ago when we needed help with our high school, you stepped forward. You were a good neighbor. He did a great job of educating our students. Uh, all the students I talked to who have gone from Albion to Marshall have talked to me about a positive experience. I'm sure there were some who would say otherwise, but the ones I've talked to have had a positive experience, and we thank you for that. It's not easy for the Albion community to make this request. It's not easy for the school board. A lot of courage for them to vote six to one to make the request. 
it, it's hard to say that we can't make it work, but in fact, we haven't made it work. And it's not because people haven't tried hard. It's not because teachers haven't taught well. It's not because parents haven't been involved. You know, probably started three or 400 years ago when the system in our country was put in place that created wage and economic inequalities, <clears throat> probably got gained speed 50 years ago when we didn't think carefully about having a city that was reliant so much on single industries, so much on industry. We didn't look for the fact that we were going from an industrial to a post-industrial world. We didn't make those anticipations. Uh, whose fault was it? It's hard to say, but it happened. And then school of choice was passed. Some like it, some don't. It certainly didn't serve the Albion public schools well. So a series of things happened that brought us to the point where we have to ask our neighbors to help us out. You don't have to vote to do it, and, and, and I hope that you'll take look at it very carefully. But I hope you'll give us good consideration because we will send you good kids. I had a chance to walk around the Albion Public School System over the last year and a half that I've been here, and they're, they're, they're great kids. I love them, and you would too. I know you'd love them if you got to meet them. And so if you accept the annexation and they come here, one of the things you'll be getting is some really good kids, and they'll be getting a good education. So we thank you for it, and we thank the folks in Albion who have made difficult decisions. Not th nothing has come to pass yet, because you have to make a difficult decision, and so do the voters of Albion. But what I can promise from Albion College is that we are committed to building a sustainable community that people all over America will look at and say, how did Albion do that? How did the Albion community do that? Because we are going to create jobs for all of our citizens. We're going to find health care for our elderly. And we're going to find a way to have a model education for our young people. And Albion College is committed to doing that. We will soon vote on our priorities for the next five years. And the vote hasn't occurred yet, but I can say with great certainty that one of the three or four elements that we will say that we're going to think about every morning when we wake up at Albion College is how do we build that sustainable community? And that means we need to help create an excellent education in the school district that includes our campus. And if there is annexation, the school district that includes our campus will be the Albion and Marshall District. And we will be committed to making certain that young people, K through 12, that are in that district are getting a model education. I don't know everything that we'll do to help out, but what I know is we have remarkably bright faculty, we have good students, we have a dedicated board of trustees, and they're all behind the task of creating one of America's exemplary public school systems in that community. We will do that whether or not annexation goes through. We don't know what's going to happen. We're committed to making an exemplary school system for our young people. If annexation goes through, we look forward to partnering with all of you in that effort. Thank you, Mark. You know what we, I, I think you, you can look at what we did last year, what we, the things that our faculty are doing. We made a commitment that young people who had need and went through the uh, public school systems and applied to our institutions and were accepted could attend at no charge. Besides scholarships, what have you done? Uh, yeah, and, and so we're going to, I'm going to ask a couple of my uh, faculty and staff to uh, make comments on that. You know, I am going to retire. Uh, I'm not probably not going to. I am going to retire. Uh, and yeah, and and what I can say is, in in the same way that Randy serves at the pleasure of his school board, and they make decisions for what they do, I serve at the pleasure of the board, and I have this commitment because the board had that commitment first, right? They had that commitment before I was hired and they'll have the commitment when I leave, and our faculty and staff have the commitment, and so do our students who are out doing service in the community, who are doing tutoring in the community, 
who are, are looking for opportunities to open up facilities around town so that they can be co-curricular activities for students. And, and you know, it's gonna be the best activities that our faculty and staff can come up with. And so let me turn the microphone over to someone who's thinking about those activities. Um, hello, my name is Sheila lyons Sabaski. I'm in the biology department at Albion College. Uh, I have two daughters in the Albion Community School System. They have been through the system Gosh, since what, even before, well, since kindergarten onward, uh, we've had uh, good experiences at the school. Why are we at the school? We're at the school because we believe in our community. We wanna keep it as strong as we can, but uh, apparently not everybody feels that way. But we, um, we do have a strong sense of community and we would bring that here as well if annexation happened. That's the first thing. Going back to the college, let's think about what's happening how the college makes their connections. I don't know all the college connections because I'm not in the Department of Education at the college, but what, I, what do I see? I see our college students getting involved with Maymester, um, which is a program with our education department where we have our education students come into the uh, classrooms at uh, local schools and teach for about a month or so. Uh, we also have um, Albion College professors and students um, go into the Albion Community School and do a variety of things. I don't even know all the things that they do. Um, Nels Christensen can probably speak more to that. But I do know that they um, have an amazing, uh, one of the programs that I recall is, it's called, I think it's called Character Club, is that right? And uh, my daughter, uh, Grace is in it, she is in the fifth grade. Uh, so what do I learn from it? She brings things home because she learns things of like she, how to be a better gardener. They're learning things about how to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, where does your food come from? Um, how do you eat new and exotic foods? Like I never ate a pomegranate before. So she could bring home those things. But they're learning about sort of everyday life skills and learning about working with other people. Um, and those are just a few examples of how the college works. But it seems like college students are always going in and out of the school, helping out in classes. Um, and I see that, I've heard too from um, my younger daughter, Stephanie, who's in third grade, how uh, they've got college students that come in and out of the classes all the time. I imagine that that kind of relationship would continue with annexation. Thank you. Thanks. I'm, I'm Andy French. Uh, I, I teach in the chemistry department this year. I'm on sabbatical leave uh, working with, uh, with Maury Ditzler as his director of community action. And as the director of community action, I, I want to turn your question back toward you in a little bit and ask, what would you like Albion College to do? Mentoring? Are you mentoring kids in the community? We mentor kids in the Albion community schools right now. Have, have May Master is in Marshall in May. What else would you like? What, what in terms of your question is, is the Marshall would be part of our school system. We're committed to working with our school system, and we're not going to follow the, the uh, restrictions at the city boundaries. But we have a partnership, it's a full partnership, and we will be bringing the, the programs that we do with our students in Marshall and how we share those. So as the director of the Build Albion Fellows Program, which is this scholarship that provides tuition, room, and board uh, in exchange for f summer work at the college and for community service work, that program is committed to providing 10 scholarships to students of need. As the director of that program, I can say that I would support an expansion of that program to meet the needs of students in the school district? Well, it, the problem is it, it's one of resources, right? So every scholarship that we give costs a whole lot of money. And so we've been able to commit to 10 spots, 
Now, if we can find funding that will support more, I don't see any reason why we couldn't expand it. But at this point, this is what we have. So, you know, a college, like the school, is a business as well. So it costs money to have faculty and programming. So, it's a very reasonable request. Sure, certainly. Yeah. When the cooperative agreement with the high school occurred, activities that were occurring at Albany High School with the cooperative action with the college now are occurring at Marshall High School, May Master internships, um, symposiums, Albany College has been involved from the get go with Marshall High School since the cooperative. Since that, okay. I'm going to let some get the uh, football game, which I'll be college hosted, and gave us the gate. And then we were named the Christmas. So, what, so, when, so when Marshall um, uh, dominated Lumen Christie this fall, um, I was at the game, and it was the most well attended football event that has been in that stadium in the 19 years that I've been at Albion. And it was awesome, and the gate was given to Marshall High School. So um, I think I can speak for President Ditchler that we really look forward to making that an annual event. Um, and so I, I think that there are lots of ways that we can collaborate with um, the Marshall schools if, if consult or annexation takes place. And I, I hearken back when this all began a month ago and I was on the Citizens Committee to think about this and to make a recommendation to the school board. And I thought of a t-shirt that I remember seeing uh, probably 15, 20 years ago when that horrible plane crash happened to that college in Ohio. And the t-shirt read, we are Marshall. And I think that those of us who are in support of annexation think of that term, that phrase, that if we do annex with Marshall, our school will be Marshall. We are Marshall. We live in Albion, but our school is Marshall Public Schools. Thanks. For the sake of time, one more question. I know you've been here for the whole thing. You want to make a statement? And you're going to be the ending statement, as I thank you all for coming in and taking the time, expressing your opinions in a free way, and uh, letting us know what you feel. One of the things that I wanted you all to know about um, our students at Albion is that they are very, very community-minded. I'll tell you who I am just a second, I forgot. My name is Cheryl Krause. I work for the college. I'm a nurse, actually. I run their health service. But in addition to that, I am also on the city council, and I was in not in favor of the resolution that was passed. I think the annexation is a good idea. But what I want to tell you about is really my love for the college. Uh, one of the, my jobs is to um, advise a group called the peer educators. Peer educators are college students who spend time teaching other college students to live good ways and do good things and all of that. But we have also have a community um, requirement uh, for community service. This year, one of the students out of my peer education group designed a mentoring program, um, also recruited 35 students. They go into the elementary school and the junior high school or the middle school every week, and they do whatever is needed. What I want you to know is that there were some problems with scheduling for a while, and they were so disappointed that they were not going to get to do that possibly that we, for about three weeks, <laughs> I had people in and out of my office saying, can't you do something? It's finally worked out. That's the kind of thing that our students, not, our, not the college itself, but the actual students can provide for you. So don't ever think that because it isn't a scholarship, it isn't important to see a college student come in and help your students understand what going to college is like is also very important. Thank you. Well, it's 9 o'clock. Good night, everybody. Wait for the next opportunity for questions or a meeting. Or
Uh, board meeting, uh, we're having a board meeting on normal business tomorrow. We're going to be re looking at refunding a bond, save the taxpayers some money. Um, the 16th is going to be a pretty big board meeting because we, we'll know whether or not we're going to be even considering it. Yeah, yeah. 